Let me uh, just reintroduce what we're doing here today, and um, I recommend going back and watching that first live video. If you're watching it back, it won't be choppy or anything. It'll look great. Um, but we're talking about audio today and how to set it up, and the, depending on um, your setup and what you need. So Jared kind of walked through this flow chart that we have on our um, that we have on our knowledge base, our help center, and. Um, Asia, if you're in the comments, I saw you heart the video. I'm, I'm still trying to pull it up here too. Asia, if you could pull that over and put that uh, link to the flow chart in this live as well, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, it just kind of walks you through what audio gear you should use depending on the type of live video you're doing. Um, that being said, I've got a couple audio experts here on the live stream with me. They're also Switcher team members, Jared and Teddy. Um, and for the rest of this live, I kind of wanted to go over how we set up audio, our mindset and how we're doing it and just our backgrounds in audio. Um, so I'll, I'm going to let you guys talk here. So Jared, Teddy, who wants to take it first on kind of your background in audio and, um, you know, why you're interested in all this stuff. Jared, uh, I'll, I'll just make it so we don't all just start talking. I'll say, Jared, you start first. Yeah. So um, I have been an audio engineer for about the last 20 years. I got started in uh, high school theater. I was blessed enough to my high school theater uh, was a big deal. We were like sixth in the country. Um, got the honor of going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival um, and doing a bunch of big stuff right out of the gate. So I was able to get a job in our local tech union right out of high school. And I worked at our local center for the arts and actors theater and all this other fun stuff as a teenager and then joined a band, hit the road and never looked back and ruined my credit. And now I'm <laughs> back to audio engineering and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So a musician, audio engineer, um, also a podcaster. So, um, I've run a podcast and worked for a local, geez, I hope you guys just heard my girlfriend sneeze. Um, bless you. Uh, but uh, also been uh, uh, worked for a local radio station and did all their Halloween events because uh, we run in a, we run a haunted house podcast as well. Mm -hmm. Teddy was there. He knows. I was going to so, say, yeah, you, yeah. you and Teddy kind of have some history and you're talking about that podcast and that kind of ties into Teddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, my my background is primarily in studio uh, sound. Um, I've been doing studio sound, sound design, mixing, mastering, engineering, stuff like that for probably the last 16 years or so. Um, that's kind of been my, my main passion there is not only being a musician, but um, recording others. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in the studio with a lot of different artists. Um, I've also spent a lot of time doing soundscapes for movies, video games, haunted houses, uh, stuff like that. So a lot of a lot of uh, software design, you know, based design as well as you know analog synthesizer stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Zach, another one of our team members in the in the comments, is laughing to keep from crying. I think talking Jared about the band full time band <laughs> equals bad credit 100 percent. Yep. <laughs> It's that moment when you find out Guitar Center has a credit card. Uh, uh -oh. It'll ruin you. Same um, here. So, yeah, let's talk about kind of like your audio setups. How, how are you guys connected right now? What, what sort of gear are you using to um, – because right now we're using Switcher Video Chat, so this is an iOS specific, but um, – what kind of gears are you recommending or, or you know, if, if someone said, hey, I want to make my Zoom call way sound way better. How do I do that? Mainly with this cat. <laughs> with the cat. There you go. No, uh, so, yeah, I'm using um, an Allen and Heath said I eight mixer. Uh, it's on a recommended list. It's a budget friendly mixer. Um, when I started here, I set out to find we had a gear list of stuff I'd never used before. So I had to first acquire that, use it, and then I was like, I don't like any of this. Sorry, guys. And then I went on a quest to find the best USB mixer I could um, at a budget level because I wanted to give budget users an option too. So this mixer was like 130 bucks or something like that. Um, it's a little four-channel mixer. It's great. Um, it is finicky. So if you have trouble, just message me there. You kind of have to figure out the button combinations. 
but it's great. So I'm just using that and an Oasis microphone. I got a Guitar Center for 100 bucks. So I always tell people you can find good microphones used if you just go to your local music shops and and hunt stuff down. I had no prior knowledge about this. I took a gamble and it sounds great. Yeah, I said this before, you know, this is my maybe I can get in screen stream. This is what I use when I'm on uh, video calls. Typically, this is an MXL 990 um, and I use a focus right a Scarlett uh, I think it's a 2i4 or 4i4 or something like that. Um, but that's what I use for my audio. And, you know, I love that as well. For I sure. should mention, yeah, like the the mic is, I, I did the same thing that you did, Jared, and got it uh, cheap at, cheap use at a, at a music store. But yeah, go, go ahead, Teddy. Sorry, I cut you off there. No, no, you're perfectly fine. Uh, so I am a simple person, so I definitely have a simple setup. Uh, I'm running a M Audio Air uh, audio interface uh, going straight through USB. Uh, going into that is a CAD E100S. Do not let that uh, give you the wrong idea about me. It was gifted to me <laughs> by a uh, ex-podcaster. It is a, it's a rather expensive mic, but it's totally unnecessary. I just use it because I have it. Um, there are a lot of great mics that, you know, Jared said before, you know, cost efficient and do great things. My credit is worse than Jared's. So um, <laughs> there's no way that I can, uh, you know, have too, too, too many great <laughs> things. But yeah. So you guys are what you guys are telling me is I've made the right move, not pursuing joining a band. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's yeah. the worst. Don't do it. You make no money. If you want to like work your butt off for Taco Bell every night, then join a band. <laughs> oh man. Um, cool. So what about, um, you know, one, one thing we talk about getting better audio and I think I, I see, Teddy, you have a um, like a sound pop or a sound filter. I've got one on the mic I'm using right now. I'm using a mic or an iRig mic HD2. Um, you know, there's there's something in the sound world that knocks out uh, wind sound that we might need to earmuff the the cat over there, um, <laughs> Jared. Before we talk about, yeah, lots of. Oh, we lost Teddy. I think he got a phone call. We're having all sorts of trouble today. <laughs> you know, but, we'll, we'll just keep rolling yeah. with it. Yeah, I have a. No, I've got a little. You can see my mic right here, actually. I just yeah. noticed. Oh, you have one too, yeah. Yeah, I've got this little clip on guy. You can get. It's like eight bucks from Amazon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I but have definitely one of those pop too. filters. The other yeah. thing is mic placement. Mm -hmm. um, I hear a lot of people place mics like right in their face. If you'll see mine, um, I'll, my gain's cranked, so I'm kind of sitting far away from mine. But uh, if you can't do that and you're afraid of room noise, I'm kind of taking advantage of our chat provider right now kind of optimizes like zoom. So I'm taking advantage of that and sitting a little farther back. But if I were recording my podcast, I would have this about here. It might be hard to see, but just kind of to the side of my face so that I'm not talking directly into it. Cause when you talk directly into it, you're going to get those like, <laughs> like those little pop noises when you say your P's and your B's. Um, so definitely mic placements, another huge thing that people kind of overlook. I 100% agree with that. I was taught um, you point the mic at the person's chin, at who the speaker's chin. That could be completely wrong. Um, you guys should probably tell me if that's right or not. But no. that's what I've been doing, and and that seems to been seems to work out for me. That is a, also a solid method. Um, uh, especially you see that more when you're doing live sound. Um, I think for podcasting or digital, maybe a side method's a little more safe. Now, you obviously know your own body movements and your natural habits and tics. So if that works for you, then try it. I mean, that's a great place to start. I personally move too freaking much to do that. So mm -hmm. I always keep one just to the side because I know I'm going to move and make my audio bad by breathing in the mic. Yeah, and that also depends on what kind of microphone you're using. Um, mm -hmm. You know, dynamic versus condenser microphones. It, it, you can have it pointed directly at you more so with like a dynamic mic, but my condenser microphone, if I, if I talk directly into it, I sound like I'm an NPR. So I also like, it's, it's a few inches from my face off to the right a little bit. So it can capture all the sound around me and hopefully not bounce off my walls too much. Cause I'm not quite in a studio right now. So. 
Yeah, 100 percent agree with you guys. Um, I'm putting this comment down here or this lower third down there, asking you all what you all uh, watching this. What are you guys using right now to um, bring your what audio gear are you using? Like what what sort of mics? I see Zach. I've, I already put this up there, but he says the SM58 is a great all-purpose mic. I have used one of those numerous numerous times. It is indeed yep. an absolutely excellent mic. So the SM58. Uh... I, I think if you're a sound guy, you know this. It's a $100 mic. It's tough as nails. So tough. We did a big production of Jesus Christ Superstar one year. And one night we lost the hammer we were using for the hammering of the nails. <laughs> oh, no. And we just beat an SM58 on a wood plank. And it worked just fine. And that mic still worked. We had to buy a new grill <laughs> for it. But, I mean... They're tough as nails. They'll get you through anything. They're also great for on the road. Um, so if you're doing podcasting at conventions, mm -hmm. dynamic mics like that pick up a lot less background noise. So uh, if you're going to be at a convention or out somewhere once this is all over, definitely run some SM58s. Let, let's talk about that a little bit, um, about different microphone types. And I do see a question in here in the comments asking, um, what type of brand of a lavalier microphone do you recommend for pasture in a church setting? Um, <clears throat> so lavalier is a different mic. Before we like get to specific mics, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about uh, the different types of mics you can get? I've got a whole bunch of them here, um, you know, ranging from we have shotgun mics to handheld mics or uh you called you guys called it a fancy name i'm forgetting now not a condenser but i don't know i call them shotgun mics um or area microphones area microphones um, yeah let me i can't remember the model number but my answer to the lavalier mic question is the most expensive one you can afford wireless stuff in the sound world is not caught up with the rest like i mean you're not going to find a Bluetooth mic or a mobile mic that does what you want it to do in a pro, like a like a music environment or a church environment. You can get like the Rode mic goes or the Sarmonic um, Blink 500s, which is what I recommend. Um, so Asia uses to the Blink 500s. Yeah, those are great, but you have to remember that those microphones are set up for content creators so they're great for like our colleague asia does asia in the kitchen over on twitch so she's cooking on her live stream and she's not going to have 300 people and guitars between her mm -hmm. and the camera when you're at a church you have live attendees you have interference from their cell phones you have interference from water pipes bluetooth is not going to cut it you need something more traditional um, it's the Shure BLX14 wireless lavalier microphone set. You can plug that into your mixer, and those are what we used back in theater. Also recommend, um, if you're someone who sweats a lot, um, make sure you put that on the outside of your clothes or cover it with um, some sort of wrap uh, so that you protect the battery pack. So, But those are perfect. Um, they'll last you forever, and once you get one, you can also periodically replace the lavalier for it for like a hundred bucks or something once they start to wear down. But those are the best in my opinion. They're 300 bucks. And if you can swing it, get it. Yeah. I had a, I had a buddy uh, who I did a lot of productions with. He used the Sennheiser. I think it was EW something. Um, those are, I think even more expensive, but they were awesome. Yeah. One I've personally used quite a bit. Um, and have actually used this in a church setting is a road link. So that's what this one looks like. I don't know how much these are going for right now. Um, but this is another pretty great option as well. Um, what I like is it's got the, the output is a 3.5. So a headphone jack basically. And you can go 3.5 to XLR and plug that into your uh, mixer and get audio in that way. Um, so yeah, definitely. Do those I, have... The ability to change bands on them. Can you yeah. change the frequency? Yes. Okay, that's the most important feature. So if you can find something like even the road mics, like the Lynx, you want to be able to change the radio band. That's the most important thing. So like the Blink 500s, if they've got a limited range and there's no flexibility, like I can't change my radio channel. 
So if I find that I'm getting interference, you're just kind of hosed. Whereas if you have something that you can change the radio frequency on, you can dial something in um, and, and get a better sound. Because all this wireless technology too, um, sometimes you'll pick up like highway truckers and crazy stuff, and that's always fun. So you definitely want if you're not if you're doing a bigger thing, you want you want the ability to be flexible there. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, I can ramble yeah. through. We actually use the road link at uh, one of the attractions that we do big shows at. And uh, the changing bands has been super important because we're on an airfield. So we get a lot of different um, we get a lot of different frequencies popping through as well. Um, a lot of signal disruption from a lot of guests because we're doing these shows for like thousands pre pre our current situation. So, um, yeah, road links are great as well. I can second that one. Cool. Um, great. You want to talk about so. Here's another question for you guys. When would you use something like this, a shotgun mic, versus when would you use something like uh, the mic I'm using here, a handheld mic? A uh, handheld mic would be for um, conventions where I'll, we're all going to sit down at a table in the lobby, and I've got a couple guests from a booth I'm interested in. I want to talk to them for my podcast, my video podcast or whatever. So I'm going to sit down with my Zoom H6 have dynamic microphones in everybody's hand and just go for it, preferably with windscreens. Um, the shotgun mic is for when you're on the trade show floor and you have that connected to your camera. I would never use a shotgun microphone with switcher. I'm sure somebody's got a use case for it, but I just don't find it super necessary unless you've got like maybe, unless you're like maybe going live from a trade show floor or something like that in that environment where you have a mobile rig and you've got your main switcher on like a mount next to you and then your camera on a gimbal and you're walking around live streaming while being mobile with a hotspot or something. I could see maybe using one then, but um, shotgun mics in my opinion are more for um, content creation and not necessarily live streaming. Um, and another great use for shotgun mic would be maybe choir. You could have a couple posted up and pointing down above your choir you could use those in that kind of a setting too. Or uh, I take it back. We have a darts, um, some darts guys that have dart matches and they want the players to be mic'd. So I recommended they use shotgun mics. They're just good area mics. So if yeah. you need to pick up ambient sound, you could use it that way too. I stand corrected. So the few, the few times that I've used one, I'll, I'll always have one of those in my kit. Um, if I'm going out to somewhere where I'm not able to get out and test the audio beforehand because at the end of the day, it's something I can put up in the back of a room and it's going to hopefully pick up everything. Um, or if they have like speakers in the room, you can kind of put it close to a speaker and maybe get some of the audio from that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it might not be the best, um, but it can, it can be good. It's going to be better than your internal mic. Yeah. It's going to be better than the internal mic. Exactly. Um, Cool. So yeah, I, we talked about lav, shotguns, handheld mics. Is there any other types? I guess there's condenser mics like that we're using, or I think you guys are using, and those are great for podcasting, things like that. Um, yeah. So cool. That's great there. Um, I saw a couple good questions come through. Um, first of all, I haven't heard of this one, or I didn't know, didn't look at this, but what do you think of the Rode Wireless Go 2 that just came out? Uh, Jared or Teddy, have you guys seen this thing? I might, I meant to kind of Google it here. Uh, yeah, I've seen them come through. Um, I want to look at it to make sure I'm thinking of the right thing. I like that we're all Googling the road go to, yeah, we're, um, we're all Googling, Googling a lot. I think that it's going to be, yeah, I've seen these guys. I think okay. it's going to be, um, I mean, I'm not sure what improvements they've made and I haven't used these, but I would still put that in the category of, using those for smaller streams, podcasting. Um, if you just want a wireless option to sit in front of the camera with, those are great. Wouldn't use those in a church setting. Wouldn't use those in a live production setting um, unless I had to. Uh, the other problem with these is they tend to be less flexible. Like with a proper wireless system, like the Shures that I recommended, you can run those into a mixer. Uh, very easily they have xlr outs so you just need xlr cables these you tend to end up going adapter crazy with trying to force them into your mixer when for the same price as those you could get the sure product and be just fine yeah 
Um, <clears throat> how about Robert was asking, um, are there any USB multi-channel, maybe four channel interfaces that work best with iPads? No. Um, sorry, I'm taking all the questions. Teddy, do no. you have? Uh, no, go ahead with that one. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I don't recommend in using an interface with switcher studio in general. Um, there are use cases for it, but, um, to answer your question, there won't be any four channels because iOS is limited to two channels of incoming audio. So you could, you can connect like a Scarlet 4i4 or something, but it's only going to see channels one and channels two mm -hmm. of the interface. Uh, it won't see channels three and channel four. Uh, so I tend to say USB mixer is better. You want something that's going to send a stereo mix via USB into your switcher. Um, the other reason I'm not too fond of interfaces is because the power situation, most of them are built to take power over USB. So then you end up having to get a bunch of different adapters to put like a uh, charging cable. You have to use one of the 12 watt or uh, 20 watt, I think Apple adapters for the MacBook or the iPad. You won't be able to charge with just an iPhone adapter because it doesn't generate enough power to power your interface and your, uh, your, iOS device. So they just, it, it just gives you another bit of intricacy, intricacy that you, I don't think you really need if you just got a mixer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and I think that's what Zach uses. I don't know if Zach's still watching here, but he's probably like, come on guys. <laughs> uh, but there's a reason like, I, I'm not using my focus right, uh, right now either. Um, I, I kind of agree with you there, Jared. Yeah, well, I think the big thing is that no matter what I say today, use what you have. What you have is the right answer right now. Yes. Get out there and create content. Get started. Get your feet wet. Don't worry about what gear you have. Just do the thing. And then as you pick up popularity and decide streaming's fun and it's for you, then invest in more expensive gear. I see one more gear recommendation that we can talk through. Um, and then... Jared, could you repeat the Sure Wireless recommended again, which you recommended there? Um, and yeah. Then fr hold on, and then yeah, and then we'll from there we'll we'll probably get into um, how how to connect these things. You know, we'll get a bunch of ideas on gear you can use, but how are you going to connect it to the iPads, the iPhones? So yeah, we'll get into that too. Oh, yeah, you know so what? Zach just Zach just is all over it and put the put the link right there into the into the comments. So cool. Yeah. Good deal. You can mention it again if you'd like. Yeah, it's just the BLX14, the CVL wireless system. Um, there's a bunch in that same model. Right now, they're on sale at your local Sweetwater. It's, they're not local to anybody, but I love Sweetwater. Buy their stuff. And then you right. can marry one of their support reps. So okay. here's here's a, a couple good questions here that are kind of very similar. Um, so asking any recommendations for audio mixer that can take four microphones and two lines for phone calls. Um, that's a little bit more involved. Maybe we can talk a little bit about yeah, the phone I got calls that. Here. All right, cool. And then, uh, Robert was asking, okay, so I need a USB mixer. Then there's a ton of options. Any of those that you can recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing with USB mixers is uh, if you're going to use video chat, you want something that has loopback. So I obsessively watch YouTube reviews of any mixer or product I buy. Um, and you want to find one that talks about the loopback feature. And what that is, is that I want to be able to hear my guest back through the mixer when I'm talking to them. So not all mixers have that feature. Uh, so the big thing is that you want to have um, either a mixer that has an aux output so that you can create a, what's called a mix minus. Um, we have guides on that. That's a big topic. But if you end up with an aux mixer and you need to hear video chat, write us. I can walk mm -hmm. you through it. Um, but Lootback's huge. Uh, Behringer is wishy-washy on that. Um, but I like these ZI8, uh, ZI10 FX mixers. Um, that's what I'm using right now. And... They have good loop back. I can run everything through it and also hear switcher. Um, there's a certain button combination you need to use. So if you get one and you have trouble setting it up, again, write me. I can help you. Um, the first question with the four mics and two phone calls, Rodecaster Pro. That's it. Mm -hmm. The Rodecaster Pro has four microphone inputs. It has an aux input. 
that you can connect one phone through and then you can connect the other one via Bluetooth. Yeah. Then that would probably work fine for you. Yeah, that's I, I agree with that. Um, you know, the Roadcaster are great, great uh, products out there. If you're a beginner, the Roadcaster is super straightforward and easy to set up. So I'd recommend that if you don't need more than four microphones. Mm -hmm. For sure. So um, cool. Yeah, that that's kind of a lot of gear recommendations. And we can see if we see a couple coming through, you know, we can talk about those too. But you guys want to maybe mention how you bring so doing a production with an iPhone or an iPad, how you're bringing audio into uh, into Switcher or that iOS device. And I've got a bunch of gear, so if you mention something, I probably have it and can show it. So, um, yeah, I'll let you guys kind of talk about it, though. Yeah, so for our podcast, I kind of run everything uh, via Switcher on my end. And what I do is... Um, I have my ZI8 mixer and I run that into switcher via USB. And then um, I connect to the video chat for our remote host. We have two hosts that are um, remote in different states. So uh, Teddy and our remote guests come in via video chat. And um, yeah, I'm just able to hear them. And I have my one microphone plugged into my USB mixer I also play uh, music from my computer. So I have an aux cable, the, a stereo cable that goes from my mixer into my monitor. And I just pull music from a Spotify playlist or um, mm -hmm. I make my own music. Sometimes I'll just play that and I'll run that out of my monitor into my mixer. Um, I also uh, do something different that this is confusing to talk about. So if you don't get it, I apologize. But I then also connect to video chat on my computer so that I can see them. And I keep that level with my camera so that it looks like I'm looking at my camera, but I'm looking at them on the monitor behind my camera. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer this over looking at the iPad uh, when communicating via video chat. The important thing there is that if you're connected to video chat on your iPad and also on a computer, mute the microphone on your computer. You're going to get echo if you do it that way so i if i use chrome to connect on my computer i right click the tab at the top of chrome and i hit mute site so that i can't hear them on my computer screen and that that doesn't come back out of my monitor into my mixer and then i mute my microphone i use it purely as a visual aid um and then yeah everything else is run through there i also have them record their own audio and send me their audio afterwards so that when I'm uploading our episode to Spotify that I can run it through Adobe audition mm -hmm. and make sure I get everybody's coughs and ums and uhs out and also edit background noise out and things like that. So I think that's super important. Um, a lot of people don't like that answer, I'm sure. But if you want to have a high quality podcast to put on Spotify, that's what you got to do. Uh, oh, another thing I do, I posted my, if you search my name in the group, I posted a sample letter that we send to rem uh, guests that we bring on. We have a lot of guests in the haunted house world that have never done a podcast, um, maybe don't even listen to podcasts. So I have this letter that I say, hey, thanks so much for your time. I explain what our interview process is. In this case, I say this is a casual conversation. Uh, no sweat. Please just be relaxed. We're talking with friends and also um, asking them to wear headphones. Um, don't be afraid. This is your show. It's your quality that's on the line. Do not be afraid to say, hey, I'm giving you advertising. I appreciate your time for coming on the show, but also uh, this is going out to all my listeners. I want it to be high quality. Please wear headphones yes. because you're going to get Echo, if they use speakerphone, you run the risk of getting echo. Also, the microphone on an iPad or an iPhone usually isn't that great. So um, just e Apple earbuds solve this problem, and they sound fine. It, the bare minimum, you get telephone quality, which is great. It's perfect for radio. It's good enough for you, too. Yep. 
Hundred percent agree with that. Don't be afraid to hop in early and yell at people. Tell them to make their well. Don't yell at people. Be nice to them, but tell them to yeah. uh, fix that. Um, make sure it looks and sounds great. Yeah, and uh, I'll also say that we, I asked them to set up a fifteen minute test call. I don't actually do that very often, but we've had it done to us a number of times, and it makes total sense. Most people are willing to come onto your show and they're excited to come onto your show. Remember, this is a big deal for most people, mm -hmm. the interview process, because most of us aren't interviewing like Brad Pitt for his next movie and he's out tired of running the press junket, right? We're talking to normal creators, normal people, business owners, what have you. They don't get the often to do this kind of stuff or they don't get the chance to do this stuff often. More than likely, they're pumped and they're willing to put on earphones and do a test call with you. It's fun for them. It's new. It's exciting. So don't be afraid to ask stuff like that of your guests. Yeah. Um, just to answer a quick question in the comments. Yes, this will be available for playback later. If you want to watch it later, um, we'll probably also be uploading it to YouTube so you can watch it there in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Teddy, you have any, uh, anything to add to what Jared was saying about how you're using audio and iOS or, or your, your favorite method? Yeah, sure. So actually Jared's method is my favorite method, but I have used or originally started using it alternatively by running a mixer through preamp via TRS mm -hmm. into a audio jack. Yeah. Um, so I have my trusty MG82 Yamaha here. It is ancient. Dan gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was running that through, um, through the smart rig and going straight into and one common problem that I definitely think that we're going to touch on is TRS to TRS adapters yeah. and how important that is to getting audio through a, a headphone jack. Um, 3.5 can be tricky. So Yeah, that's um, first of all on that that mixer. You have no many. You have no idea how many high school dances that thing is. <laughs> that's how it all started. That's how it all me. started. <laughs> um, yeah, how I'm normally bringing audio in be it um, USB-C or um, Lightning, I'll, I'll talk about that first, is using an Apple adapter such as uh, this one here that has the USB port on it and also has the charging port. And then here's that Sabre that we kind of talked about earlier. It has the USB on it. That just plugs into it. And then you have a headphone port that you can um, plug your audio into. And this takes a TRS. What is the what is TRS versus TRS? Does that, either of you guys want to talk about that or or bring that up? Um, I kind of have a idea as well. If you will, if you'd like me to take it, I will give the simpleton answer, and then that is TRS equal two ring tip, TRRS equal three ring tip. So that's so, the that's the thing that you need to know. See, I'm a, I'm just afraid that I'm going to say something that's you know not that it might be right, but not technically completely accurate depending on uh you know talking with you guys who actually know your stuff but um here, for instance here's an adapter that's going to switch that trs so you'll see on there there's two rings if i can get that in focus um, and then this other side here has three rings um, this is also i think called like a multi-jack meaning it can manage both the headphones and the microphone through the same port um so what is it? I think it's the first ring there that does the headphones. So when you plug in the two ring, the only thing you would get is the headphones. And, and that's why you're not, get, don't, not, or you're not getting the microphone. So um, yeah, iPhones, iPads are going to be a TRRS. So the three ring um, connector. So if you're bringing in your audio that way, you're going to need, uh, you know, either need an adapter, like this is just a Rode SC6, I think it's called. Um, you know, they make them like this too. So you plug just your straight TRS in and then it's got the TRRS on the other side. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the basic quick down and dirty on the, um, on TRS versus TRRS. So I don't, I don't know if, there, if we can get more, specific or you guys would like to but um, uh it's yeah. just a bunch of technical jargon i think the most important thing is the ring tip the amount of ring tips you got mm -hmm. so make sure you got that that correctly that's the most common question that comes into inbo our inbox and support is hey i'm trying to run an aux cable out of our mixer into the headphone jack on my ipad why isn't it working it's because you're using a regular aux cable which is a trs cable and you need a trs cable so 
if you're having that trouble, you just need to <clears throat> hop on Amazon and get a an adapter. Also, before I forget to say this, we've talked a lot about Rode products today. Uh, if you're getting a Rode product, do not get a Rode product from Amazon. Amazon is not an authorized dealer of Rode. And if you're like me and you get your road mic go from Amazon when you start doing your podcast and want to go on the road with it, and then that microphone breaks, they don't honor the warranty because they hate Amazon at road. So do not <laughs> buy anything road from Amazon. Get it from B&H Photo, yes. Sweetwater, or Road themselves. I don't know if they sell on their shop. But. 100% agree with that. Um Cool, yeah, I see Zach again is answering questions in the comments here. Um, i got a couple more people asking about um, lapel mics. I think someone was saying, like, is there a way to get two lapel mics into Switcher or into an iPad without having a mixer involved? Is that possible? Um, George, I see here, says, what are the best lapel mic options? If you uh, watch a little bit earlier in this, we go over a whole bunch of different um, options. The too long, didn't watch is what the best or the most expensive one that you can afford is probably going to be your best bet. Uh, we talked about the road link, uh, being a good option. Sure. Uh, what was the actual, uh, the uh, number The BLX 14. Mm -hmm. Um, now I will say if you, you want to set yourself up for success. So this is something that we haven't talked about yet either. Are you going to be comfortable having just those two microphones forever? because you're going to spend 250 yeah. on this solution. And for that solution, if you just only need two microphones, you're only going to need two microphones forever. Sarmonic Blink 500s is my choice. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one receiver that plugs into your iPhone with two microphones that connect to it. And those are great in just kind of a podcast casual setting. Would not do it for pastors at a church because the distance issues can create, the distance on those is just kind of limited. So just spending depending on the size of your your church, it could cause problems. Um, but if you think you're going to grow and eventually you're going to need to be streaming with um, music and other things, then a mixer is just going to be the best investment. Um, so keep that in mind too. But the Blink 500s are the best in my opinion, um, or Rode makes a, set, a similar set as well. That just plug in your iPhone and... Um, yeah, a lot of people like those. I've never used them, so that's why I don't recommend them. I try to stick to the things that I I've used. Yeah, um, cool. Well, we're it's at, it's at three fifty five right now, and like I said, we kind of have to stop this at about an hour. But there's so much more to talk about, so this might be a maybe we'll do another one of these here very soon um, to go over a lot more of the setups, more of gear we recommend, and just answering everybody's questions. I will, uh, we'll leave with, I guess, something kind of funny here, which um, I see Paul asking, is there an Apple to Lightning to multi-port for Ethernet and HDMI? Um, trying to plug literally everything into it. Um, there is a way it gets so insanely, there's so many, I can show you. Um, it is possible using this. And I know um, this is an Anker. USB hub, so you'll need something like this. Now this has a USB port on it. These USB ports, or the or Ethernet, I'm sorry, these Ethernet ports don't work anymore. So what you need for your Ethernet is you need um, an Apple Ethernet adapter plugged into one of these. You'll need your Sabrent plugged into one of these, <laughs> like so. Uh, so you have your audio here, you have your ethernet here. You'll also need to make sure this thing's powered since ethernet requires you to have power. Um, and then you'll also have to be using a USB, one of the USB C iPads because that has the USB and HDMI both on it. So it's possible. It's a whole bunch for your iPad to be doing and it might not um, lead to the best results, but yeah. Um, the, you definitely want to reiterate need an iPad Pro with the USB-C yes. port. Uh, Lightning can't handle that. Um, no. And also another great option is just getting a powered USB adapter. You can get mm -hmm. those for like 20 bucks off of Amazon. Um, and that will give you the power needed to run Ethernet um, as well. So uh, you, you might still need to charge your iPad, but that'll get you power for your USB devices. 
All right. Well, I'm going to tell you guys what, this is all the time we're going to have for now. Um, I I'm still seeing there's so much we wanted to cover and there's, um, a lot of questions in the comments. So we'll, we will definitely be doing another one of these, hopefully with, um, the three of us, maybe we can get Zach in as well, or some other team members as well in here, helping us out, answering these questions. But, um, yeah, guys, sorry for, uh, you know, stopping this a little bit short before we get through everything. But like I said, we will do another one of these audio streams here in the group to answer all of your questions. So, um, Teddy, Jared, thank you guys for your insight. Like I said, I, I know a little bit about this, but I'm really glad to have you guys on and correct me on all the dumb things I make, uh, or dumb <laughs> things I say or stuff that's wrong. If, no, it's that's... In, if it's in our Slack conversations or otherwise. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning or thank you all for tuning in. Thank you guys for being on here with me and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be live here soon and we'll talk about more of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you.